Sean Haney here with realagriculture.com, and we're at Farm Tech 2016 in the Real Ag Lounge in our uh, studio here. And right now we are joined by a very, very good friend of Real Agriculture, the president or CEO of Crop Life Canada. That's right. Yep. Ted Benzies. Correct. How are you doing today? Ted? I'm doing just great. What a great event. You having fun? Uh, yeah, it's it's old home week getting together. I used to come to this event years and years ago, when, back when I was farming. Yeah. Uh, much smaller event. Much more senior folks around the floor and it's actually kind of neat to see the younger flavor here a lot of younger producers dad's right. home doing the chores <laughs> and uh, and the younger people are here to learn great event is that what makes it special it is special because of that because there's so many young and enthusiastic people that are here now uh, i've met more people that are half my age and they're here to learn they're excited about agriculture they're engaged. They want to learn all the new technologies. They want. To, they come here to network with other people their age. Yeah, yeah. And so, hear what's happening on their farm. So, what's happening at Crop Life Canada? What's what's sort of on your file, your desk, the some of the issues that you're currently working on? Well, I guess uh, if I can give a little uh, bit of an advertisement for why I'm here, I'm giving a presentation on confident conversations. And we see that as the, the biggest challenge to, to agriculture from our view. So uh, w Crop Life Canada represents the formulators, the developers, the manufacturers, the distributors of plant protection products and of plants of biotechnology, modern agriculture that's helping farmers grow more, be more sustainable, and to be able to pass their farms on to their children actually in better shape and more productive than when they started farming. But to get that message out is difficult. It's difficult for farmers to explain what it is they do, what it, how they're growing their crops, and, and why they're confident that they're providing safe food for consumers. And consumers are more and more asking, where did this come from? How did you grow it? And, and is it safe for me to consume? But it's a difficult conversation for people to have. Farmers are busy. They're busy farming. They right. don't want to have to take time to explain to people that, you know, I, I grow this food. My children eat this food. Of course it's safe. So do you think, though, that a lot of farmers feel, though, that, listen, that isn't my role. My, my, my role isn't to be the, you know, advocate for this industry, my my job is to do what I do, which is grow crops, uh, raise livestock, you know, market my crops, and you know, put food on the table for my family. Why why do I have to participate in this area of communications that really I'm not comfortable with? We need to learn from those that have gone down this road before us. The oil and gas sector thought that they could just carry on their business, drilling holes, mining. Uh, extracting oil from the oil sands without explaining to people why it is they're doing it. Oh, by the way, it's going to heat your house or it's going to help you drive your car up right. and down the road. They thought they didn't need to explain that to people. And they came to the conclusion after a lot of challenges to their industry that they actually had to, if you want to use the term, earn a social license to be able to operate they needed to explain to people that what we are doing in the oil sands is rebuilding the land after we mine it and producing, <coughs> excuse me, producing a, a tremendous amount of energy and turning it back into productive land with flora and fauna on it that wasn't there before. And so farmers are doing the same thing. They're, they're producing crops. They're leaving their land. Uh, it doesn't blow away anymore. Yep. We've reduced our tillage. <coughs> excuse me, we've reduced our tillage practices so the land doesn't blow away. So when we have 158 kilometer an hour wind like we see in Clairesholm, Alberta, you don't see clouds of dust. Farmers are doing it better, but we need to now follow the lead of some of the extractive sectors and take time to talk to consumers and say, I'm producing a safe quality food for you and for 150 other countries, which is a good thing. And I'm doing it sustainably. And I'm going to leave my farm in better shape than when I found it. So clearly biotech from your standpoint is an important part of that social license discussion. Um, but it's not the only component to that, right? So uh, I often think that 
water is left out of that discussion. I, I just watched that, that documentary, Dead Harvest. I don't know if you've seen that, about the water crisis in California, which is essentially a man-made drought uh, for all intents and purposes. So this whole area of social license is, r is a really big, it's a big sucker. It's not just like, you know, this is why I feed my cows this way. How, how do you get your head around it? Well, it's a real challenge for, uh, for farmers that are dependent on irrigation or other farmers that are dependent on, on the weather for rainfall. And it's a challenge that we, that we deal with. But we can't ignore the fact that we can implicate water through the products that we use. So we need to make sure that we follow all of the rules, that we use the right amounts, the right applications. We don't, uh, we don't use pesticides anywhere near water courses. I mean, that's standard practice. And some people think that we don't understand that, but we do. There's water quality uh, analysis being done in a number of our provinces, more so in the eastern provinces even than here. And they're seeing that where there's more intense populations. And so we're working with those. Our members are very concerned about that, that we might be implicated in any of that. So we're working, we're actually funding some of those studies mm. to make sure that the products that we use, the products of biotechnology or the crop protection products, are not finding their way into the water system. And that's very, very important. One in five developing countries by 2050 is going to be water insufficient. So the other way we contribute is through biotechnology, the research into crops that are drought tolerant right. or salt tolerant. Yep. So the research that's done here in the drier parts and down in the Palliser Triangle and the southwest corner down where you know live. Know it well. <coughs> down where you and I live, Sean. The research that we do there in drought tolerance is actually going to be transferable to these countries that are going to be water insufficient. Yeah, well, that's a perfect segue to my next question. So if we are going to bring new products to market, you have to have a predictable registration process. So can you update us? There's a lot of, been a lot of talk about, you know, you need to have a predictable science-based uh, registration system. Do we have that in Canada in your mind from your membership's point of view? It can always be better, but then so can I. I can do a better job of whatever I do. I just have to work hard at it. But we have to remember that Health Canada is renowned around the world. We have the agencies underneath Health Canada, the Pest Management Regulatory Agency and the Canadian Food Inspection Agency under the umbrella of Health Canada. And Health Canada has an incredible record. You'll have heard this in your travels around the world. They'll say, wow, you guys have a great system. It's great in that it protects the health, uh, the, the safety of the food that is consumed, that is, comes into this country, that is grown here. And it also makes sure that it has very stringent regulatory approvals before there actually is an approval, uh, processes in place to make sure that these products that are being approved for farmers to use to protect their crops from insects or diseases, that there's a good uh, oversight before those are ever approved. We should be proud of this system. Can they do better? Of course, uh, you know, when uh, just like any any person we'd like to see it more efficient and get it done it's an incredible process it's a good process can we, and we work with them <laughs> so we work with them hand in hand your mm. membership uh, does many of them do business around the world mm -hmm. right so how how do they view the canadian market is it like how is you know because they're doing business in the u.s the uk australia how is the canadian market viewed by the membership well, the interest, uh, it's a good question you ask because most people would think that Canada is a big player on the international market as far <laughs> as agriculture. Uh, we're not. Yeah. You know, as much as we'd like to think we are, Sean, we're yeah, not. Yeah. Um, and when one province deviates uh, from the, the processes that are in place, we have federal regulatory bodies that oversee Health Canada oversees uh, the regulatory agencies that approve new products to make sure that they're safe. But when we have a province that tries to supersede those sort of uh, decisions, mm -hmm. um, these international companies look at it as that's Canada. That's not just one province, that's Canada. So our uh, heads of our Canadian companies, members of CropLife Canada, are always competing for investment dollars for building their business right, in yes. Canada to provide the products that our farmers need 
to protect their crops or to grow better crops or to have new technologies to produce more and better food. And so they're challenged when they go to their international headquarters, I want investment money in Canada. And they say, well, yeah, but you, uh, you know, you've know, you got some funny things going on in some of your provinces. Right. And they say, no, 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 that's just one province. That doesn't count. You're yeah. called Canada. Well, especially the size. I mean, we're not talking about Iowa here. We're, you know. Yeah. We're, and, and they're competing. Just like farmers in Canada are competing to grow the best canola. Uh, the, these company, each country is competing for investment dollars. We're, we're all talking about invest in Canada. It'll build the industry here, strengthen it. We've got a great solid industry, great reputation. Yeah. And we need to make sure that the federal regulatory bodies that govern this are actually the ones that are respected and we follow their leadership. So it, it creates an interesting question or interesting issue is that we, you know, when we have governments that are making decisions that aren't uh, under the definition of our science-based decision-making, in my air quotes, um, and are making decisions based on you know, emotion, can we still use the word, because I've, I've heard people say to me, we can't say science-based decision-making anymore because everybody has their own version of science, right? Can, can we rely on science as much as we'd like to? How, do, how does that fit into this discussion? We still have to rely on science, but going back to this uh, confident conversations, discussing what you as a farmer do with the public, don't ever argue with science tells us. Right. That doesn't cut it. Yeah. Tell them the story about why you as a farmer grow a, a crop that can protect itself, that has built-in technologies to protect itself from insects or from disease. And explain why you do that and explain that that has actually allowed you to do use less tillage on your, on your farm. It retains more moisture in your soil. It pr helps protect the wildlife that, uh, that live on your land. Tell them that story. And that's, that's why we're trying to reach out and, and work with farmers. To We do it through social media. Yeah. Trying to get the message out that this, this is as positive. Yeah. It's positive. It's sustainable. Well, like Terry O'Reilly said yesterday in the opening keynote, right? It's, people respond. Yeah. Storytelling is a, it raises emotion. Yeah. So you know, we need to focus more on the why instead of so much on the what. Here's what I do. Well, yeah, that, that's great. I don't understand any of that. You, you Nor know, should they have to, Sean. Yeah, Nor should but they it, have but it's to. It's just like the, the energy. You, know, you use the energy industry. I know nothing about the oil business. And if you know, somebody said, well, this is what we're doing. We're drilling out here. And I would probably ask, okay, well, why do we need fracking? Like, you know, you know why? It's okay to ask. Yeah. And too many times I don't think nor do we explain the why, but we also don't ask it either. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it's it's difficult for for farmers to, you know, they they're busy, they're planning their cropping for next year, they're planning what seed varieties they want to select, and the, and they're at at uh, sessions like this learning about new technologies, and how do they reach out to their consumer? It used to be that everybody had an auntie or a grandma that lived on the farm. Right. That's not the case anymore. Yeah. So we've we we've have this massive disconnect between farmers, and they've grown larger, just like any industry has. We don't have the little small town hardware store or the corner grocery store anymore. We have we two kind of cell phone providers. Like yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and so so these these farms have grown larger. Their businesses. And to hear some of the young people here that want to get out and explain that, but how do they? How do they reach yeah. the public? And it's, uh, you know, kudos to you. What you do actually helps explain to people, and we all spread that message, retweet it, get it out there, right. about what, why farmers use the products that they do. Oh, that's cool. I appreciate that, Ted. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. All right. Good thanks, talking Tom. to you. And enjoy yeah. the rest of Farm Tech. I shall indeed. Make sure you come back for the to the Farm Tech or the Real Ag Lounge here later on. We're going to have a beverage. Oh, I might just do that. <laughs> it's great chatting with you. <laughs> <Thanks>. Cheers. <laughs>